I'm just good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. Okay, with the sexy voice. Okay, I'm I, I, no, no, she. Okay, trying to sound like my mama. Hey, listen, her mama called in the other morning. I thought I had dialed a one nine hundred number. Oh. I'm like, mistake. <laughs> Maya Angelou. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that room reminds me of sexy. You know. Hey, I'm talking about like mama had mama. I was like, ooh, I feel so tingling inside. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but like, that's still my mama, bro. <laughs> and my still daddy wife. No. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. You better throw that in there. <laughs> so, uh, Jess, what are we doing today, man? I know you, I know you coming. Oh, oh, yeah. No, definitely. Now, first of all, I want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Me too. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, now, I just want to give a brief introduction and remind everybody where I'm from. I'm from Emory University and the All of Us Research Program. Uh, now what we do is that uh, we want to make sure, we want to help ensure for the future that medicine is not one size fits all. Um, and so that means that we're participating in this research that gives you the opportunity to be able to shape what medicine is for the future. Um, and so I know, I hate to sound like a broken record because I say it every month, but it's important that we provide information because again, if I'm a black woman with certain you know situations going on or no predisposed conditions, um, health conditions. I want to make sure that I'm providing stuff for my grandchildren's grandchildren, and that's the purpose of all of us. Um, and I want to give a, a real quick, uh, some basic information, and we'll jump into what we're going to be talking about today. Um, in order to, uh, when you're logging on to the All of Us website, and it's www.joinallofus.org, um, when you do that, uh, there's an opportunity to create an account, you review the consent, you agree to share your electronic health records, so we be, we're able to pull the information that you already have existing to be able to shape the information that we're using in regards to our research, um, which is an amazing thing. And then you answer some health surveys, because we tell people when we speak to them that we're studying lifestyle, environment, and genetics. So the health surveys give us information about you. So if you live near power lines, if you've been drinking at this same little lake for the past 30 years, you know, all of those things can have health issues. Have you ever seen the movie Aaron Brockovich? Uh, mm -hmm. They got a lot of the people were getting cancer because they were up near some power lines and it was like some bad water or something PNG, like in their little town. Yep. And they were and they got sick as a result of it and didn't know because you're just and again now you're a product of your environment at that point. So that's your environment, not just a predisposed health condition. So giving information on the health surveys gives you the opportunity to be able to shape the information that we're able to research in the future. And then you visit one of our partner centers, and that's where we take a blood and urine sample, we take your blood pressure, and then your hip, <coughs> hip and waist measurements. And all that all that information that we collect is an opportunity to be able to go and uh, study it. It's uh, your bio sample, so those that blood and urine, all the bodily fluids that we collect. Uh, we're they're sent to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota the same day. And then that information is a process, and then we take the next few months and study it. Um, so it's a great opportunity to be able to uh, find out information to give yourself some insight on what's going on with your genetics, who you are as a person, and how to move forward. Um, and on our website, when you are one of our participants, we provide updates. Um, if there's opportunities to take part in other research, and there's the ability to access your information. So again, if you would like to uh, just do some research, because again, I don't encourage anybody to do anything without doing your due diligence, check us out, www.joinallofus.org. Now, um, let's jump into what we're going to be talking about today. Um, how many of you have set some goals for uh, the year 2021? I okay. only have one goal. I got a little here and there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I've been, so I, so I got one goal. Okay, what's Mine's that already in motion. Mine is just to stop procrastinating so much. Because one thing about me, I'm a big procrastinator. So it's like, I feel like I have a deadline. I feel like the deadline is so far out the reach. It's like I got plenty of time to do it. But before you know it, the deadline is already there. And then I got to rush to do stuff. So that's my only goal. Okay. Now, um, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Forbes.com. Because, you know, that's, you know, as the young people say today, where the money resides, you know, they talk about... Where the money resides, yes! <laughs> where does that come from? Everybody's talking the about... Young, he, the young man, he's a car salesman in Louisiana. Talking about the one that was walking like that? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah I he, saw that, but I thought that was... He got it from somewhere, too. But, no, he created it. Yeah, okay. He got t-shirts and everything mm -hmm. else. Okay. I'm, I'm excited for him. You know, you got to be able to ready... You gotta be, I think that he's good because he was ready to receive his bag. Because mm -hmm. I saw mm -hmm. him on Angela Rye's Instagram, and she did a live interview with him, and he had already sold out of his t-shirts. Stuff was already trademarked. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a, 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 a Caucasian fellow that tried to copy what he did mm -hmm. um, very terribly. Um, and he has trademarks on the, the phrase already. So mm -hmm. that was a great way to be able to kind of take care yeah. of yourself. Mm -hmm. But before we make the goals, 
um, we want to give ourselves credit for things that we accomplished in 2020. So does anybody have anything that they felt that they killed or that they got done or that they exceeded their own expectations in 2020? I actually did. You know, we talked about stuff. Um, for for sure, like, the cocktail bar and soul um, started independent. Like, it started the very first one was February 29th. Mm -hmm. And the one that we were scheduling for March, we had to cancel because of the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. like, it went months and months without it. And then it came back. But in the meantime, I was still, like, catering and selling plates and stuff. So I definitely, that was that was a big feat for me. Like, it was like, bro, you did it. And you can you can do it. Like, just stay consistent. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll say one thing for me is um, <clears throat> starting um, to go on there with this registration is like <clears throat> free because, you know, with this pandemic, I'm in school too, Georgia State. So with Come this pandemic, okay, Panthers all day. But you know, with this pandemic, it was like a lot of internships I had lined up, they were canceled because mm -hmm. of this um, pandemic. So it's like, dang, I'm not going to get these internships. It's kind of almost time for me to graduate. So it's like, what am I going to do? Because you know how people say, if you don't get an internship, nine times out of ten, if you're not in school, you're not going to get an internship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this happened. And then also, just me being in school, like me rocking it out doing what I do and just getting close to the graduation. So, them two things. That's fantastic. What about you, Queen? Well, for me, I slayed last semester at Georgia State University. Yes. Okay, double, double portion of Georgia State. Come on. Yes, and I'm currently um, in Georgia State University now. Started back yesterday taking six classes. Um, I, I did that. You know, I give myself credit and permission to celebrate that. Um, yes. My goals and dreams are already in motion. This happened for me here at Hits 92.3 was a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, and you couldn't put a price tag on the experience that it's given me because I know for sure that I will excel in radio. Uh, that is the, the goal. Maybe television, not really so much, but definitely radio. Uh, that and just working on me as far as self-help getting myself staying consistent like i went a full year once a week without missing an appointment and it's been so rewarding for me internally to be able to facilitate my emotions mm -hmm. awesome and check myself when needed it has nothing to do with anybody else it's just like you go girl <clears throat> you did that and the thing that i think that you highlighted the most or, or what the best thing that you highlighted should i say is that you were talking about personal accountability, personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of reasons why we can blame other people for things that are going on in our lives. For sure. That can trigger us, no doubt. However, it's how we react. It's how we exist inside those situations. It's how we really understand, you know, who we are in those things. And a lot of times we miss that because we're so busy blaming other people. Right. Playing games and not taking personal accountability when you were still a part of that. So whatever, I, if I come and push you, you can turn around and beat me up, but then when you in handcuffs, you're going to be like, it was her fault. Of course I triggered a response. However, it's monitoring how you move forward in those things. Girl, you just spoke to my soul, because let me tell you, <laughs> my favorite saying is, you can't you can't slap me and don't think I don't deserve to shoot you. You can't tell me what I'm supposed to do to you after you did something to me, so. But, but you in school, so we can't have you in yeah, handcuffs. Yeah, of course, you know, of course not, you know. but that was my saying. Like, yeah. No, and I totally well, understand that. <laughs> like, I still run the risk of getting shot. Right. No, no, which I totally understand. And again, of course, we have to, again, and being responsible for our action, provoking other people into certain things as we've seen in the news on a consistent basis in regards to the Proud Boys and everything else, how acting out, uh, how silly it can look, especially as grown people. Um, and we're just out here rallying and riding for things that we may not even fully understand, but we said we believe in. And I think that that's something. Now, tell, tell me about some things that might have, that surprised you most about 2020. Because again, folks have been given 2020 a lot of power. And I feel like a lot, I've seen a lot of people shine and pivot and grow. And it was just days on the calendar. Yeah, yeah. for me, I don't, I, 2020 has been one of the greatest years of my life. I had the opposite experience of most people, how they say, well, 2020 did this, oh, 2020 got to go. 2020, man, I stacked my bread, 2020. I, I accomplished some personal goals. Like, 2020 has been good to me. Uh, fortunately, I didn't lose anyone, you know, so it didn't have power over me. Maybe it's Psalms 91, I don't know. Yes, yeah, Psalms yeah, that That's one of my favorites. It was, 2020 was hard as hell. I can say that this morning, it was. But it literally showed me me. Like, it showed. They played Whitney Houston song of They said, I didn't know my own strength. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. 2020 showed me, like, bro, you stronger than you think you are. You stronger than you gave yourself credit for. Um, 
2020, because of, you know, Corona, because of everything, it, a lot of us um, were kind of, like, despondent. Like, you, you're so separated from everything, so it's just you. And so, 2020 helped me fall in love with me in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like you know you it took away all of the all of the people, all of the event all of the stuff that would have been in place. And it really showed me and show me me in a sense too, uh on the positive side. Well I guess it, it can never take a negative from that because it showed me like, bro, you your talents are limitless, but you are your problem now. You can't say this person did this or this person did that because you're procrastinating. You're not pushing yourself you're not applying yourself to the fullest extent so like i'm forever grateful for the experiences that the year afforded for real for real mm. what what 2020 has taught me a whole lot of life 2020 has shown me no matter how much money you have with this pandemic this pandemic shuts so much down who would have ever thought that with this pandemic going on I'm talking about rich people, famous people, like everything is the just shut the world just stopped. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> right. So I mean that's what it showed me is like God is real. Like if he wants and I feel like he wanted a lot of people to take this time out to like I'm not trying to get religious or spiritual, but I felt like he wanted this time to like because he's he, he upset what's going on in the world. So he's like I'm God, like no other man comes before me, so I'ma just, you know, make this world shut down and come then, on Bible study. Yeah, you know, Psalm ninety one and then come on. <laughs> That's how I feel like you would never. You know what's you know. crazy? I just had a revelation while you were speaking. That's my life. And that's probably why I wasn't so affected like most people were, because I'm a hairstylist. And my life is a faith walk. So yeah. this is all I know is rely on God. So when the world was in an uproar, I'm like, nothing changed for me. I still prayed about what I wanted. I still practiced, like, meditating and drawing to me what I wanted. It, it, it's like nothing changed. But now I see why because most of the world, like you said, were, like, dependent on their jobs, their careers, their bookings, whatever. And then it's just me and, like, other people like me who just basically walk by faith every day and not by sight. And that's literally my life, literally. I'm so, smiling. That's, that's, why didn't get, that's probably why. So when I say that, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, well, I'm good. No, I don't. Like, like, that's really my life. But it's okay it's to walk in your power. It's okay to, to walk yeah. in confidence, understanding that your situation <clears throat> wasn't everybody else's, and it could have been. Because yeah. there were a lot of reasons to be depressed when you just see the world at large. Because I think a lot of people, I know that I did, I wrestled with seeing other people that were experiencing loss and I felt helpless to, to help them. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if you're a people pleaser or you like jumping in and just kind of like, you know, rolling up your sleeves, it's a, it was a situation where you, you can't just do things. You can't, I can't help you with this. If you're experiencing, you know, a crazy amount of loss, if you lost your job, if you lost family members, and there weren't remedies, there weren't things you could do to fix it. There was no fixing it. You just had to pivot and keep moving. And I think it actually allowed us time to heal a little bit mm -hmm. because as crazy as and I keep saying it, as crazy as it was everything stopped so you, you there was no distractions you had to deal with whatever it was mm -hmm. um and I'm not a good person to deal with stuff and I, I you know I ain't scared to tell it I tried cocaine during the pandemic because I didn't have nothing else mm -hmm. I I was losing I was getting hit so I'm like hey I need I need a quick fix Cause honestly, and this was like right when at the height of it, when everything was shut down, church wasn't there no more. And oh. even when church was there, church had not been what church once was. Right. So um, for me, it was like I just need I need a relief. I need something. And so um, no, the cocaine was that didn't the weed the none of that really worked. So like, bro, what do you know? And so when you say your faith and you say it, we normally. Um, Oh, God brought me through, God brought me through. Like, I know for sure because I literally, and this ain't nothing like, you know how the old people say, I tried everything else and everything else. And I legit tried everything else and nothing else worked. Nothing else worked. Like, um, no amount of liquor. Like, I'm talking about, I had people like, um, Tasha even said, she's like, you drinking a little more? You, you, ain't, you don't even drink like that. I was just trying to self-medicate and nothing mm -hmm. else worked but to go back and to seek God for real. Not seek a building, not seek church, not seek validation from people, but literally seek God. And this, I can say that uh, I have a lot of 
kind of issues within myself as it relates to like organized religion and how people are treated and mm -hmm. all of that. But to know that my heavenly father still reigns supreme, I saw his hand at work during the pandemic. Like I ain't trying to be funny, but it ain't no way in hell that I shouldn't be walking around here blind, crippled, or crazy with the gear that I had. And mm -hmm. it was still one of the better years. 2020, a lot of loss as it relates to people passing away. But in talking to me and just being around me, whatever, people would not have imagined that I had the year that I had because it, his hand was still on me even in that. So I, I'm, I'm amazed at, like, the things that can be done when he gets your attention or when you're centered or focused on him. And it took a whole lot of trial and error, trying other things to for me to come back and say, okay, God. But I'm that's here. the point. It's okay to be seen trying. Um, I watched this uh, YouTuber, Evelyn of the Internet, and she's really good about like being transparent about her experience in 2020. It was a lot of loss for her, a lot of depression and things like that. But she mentioned that getting minutes? things done and, and rehashing oh, things and starting it. things over, a lot of times we are afraid to be seen in the midst of we are afraid to be shown uh, falling, stumbling, tripping. We are afraid to be seen doing any of that stuff, making big mistakes, making little, yeah. even little mistakes because because social media is so visual. People, you, you, you want people to see, we only see the highlight reels on Instagram. We see the highlight reels on Facebook. And so people are like, Jess is having the time of her life, but you don't really know. I'm crying every time I get in my car. You're I'm right, crying right. at night. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm texting people in the middle of the night trying to figure out or soothe whatever it is. You yep. never know what someone is enduring or going through. And I know that to be true because we didn't have middle of the night conversations. What mm -hmm. was a newborn? A newborn, a newborn baby, a vampire crackhead. Crackhead, because we, because there were times where like she, she had to get up to go to work in the morning, but and I didn't really have to get up and come here anymore because it was pandemic. We were closed down for a minute, but like I couldn't sleep. She was up and mind wondering like how this gonna happen, how this gonna. She not knowing that, and she was, literally was pouring into me and like I'm talking about. We having conversations like it's three o'clock in the afternoon and it's three o'clock in the morning, like for real. For real. So I, I, don't, I don't ever sleep. But, um, <laughs> so we're going to jump into some goal setting uh, for 2021 because I feel like if you have a, we be, I have a saying, we begin with the end in mind. So if we have a goal point, if we have somewhere to be going, then it gives you the opportunity to be able to, to know where it's, it's, it's easy to map that out um, and just identifying some stuff. So making sure that all your goals are measurable. So for me, I created a, a whole bunch of checklists. Because it's just easy for me to so if I got out of bed that morning, you you go, girl, you did it. You got out of bed, you know, so I'm checking it off the list. You you didn't brush your teeth, you got in the shower, you did all those things. So what are some goals that you guys know that you could set for yourselves that for twenty twenty one that you know that you'd be able to accomplish easily? Because just because it's an easy goal or something that you've done already does not mean that it's not a good goal. Yeah. So is there anything that you guys uh, want to share that uh is something that you know that you can hit but it's still something that needs to happen? Um, I would say for me, I would say graduating. I keep okay. saying that, but shoot, when you were still in it, hey. Hey, graduation <laughs> is, the, is the whole reason. And it's like, I'm so close. And it's, I'm real close, so that's a goal, just to graduate. Because it's like, determining when I, if I want to do full-time or part-time. Because sometimes, some semesters I take like two classes. Some semesters I take five. So Ooh, I, I okay. could have been graduating. Right. Right. Like, I'm some overachievers in this room. Okay, she said six classes. <laughs> you talking about five at a time? I, it's a lab included, and they just separated it. So really, it's five, but... It's a whole other no, but it's yeah. another class. It's a whole other thing you gotta do. <laughs> no, and that's what I'm saying. Give yourself credit. Don't discount. Just like, oh, I just raised my child. Oh, I just, you know, run a business. Oh, I just, and just because those are things that you already do does not mean that they are not phenomenal. Because there are a lot of people that buckle under the pressure easily, and they're like, I can't hit school and this and, and traffic and and will freak out. Yeah. I know some people that cannot literally cannot deal with Atlanta traffic, and they will like lose it, have to pull over. Crying, and I'm like, I just turn on my music. I'm like, traffic is what it is. It's gonna be Listen, there. Listen, so around it. No, when I first moved here, like actually, when we used before I moved here, when we used to first come and come and visit, I would get so nervous because you leave from where we are, two lanes, and then you come to six, and then like, bro, like, what is this? So, <laughs> see, I, I, yeah, I, 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 you would. And so, like now, now it's like I don't even real recognize it, like. I didn't cross over five lanes to take an exit and not like it's the mm -hmm. second nature now. But back then, it was scary. Like for real, for real. Like seriously scary. But yeah, so the main focus is, you know, setting your goals, be seen, trying, 
and then identify again breakthrough goals that you want to make so graduation is a major one because you you're crossing a threshold you're moving on to other things you're elevating it puts you in a different uh, bracket in regards to your experience level because um although not everybody is a degree holder some people are you know do di take different paths going through uh, the education process is major because you are setting you have put in the time and said i'm dedicated i've been dedicated to this portion of this field for this amount of time and so that's really what it proves so it's a major thing so anybody else any breakthrough goals that you guys are setting for this year yeah for me my breakthrough goal is to excel in radio excel um i i, I used to always feel ashamed to say i want the I want the fame and the fortune. I used to always just say, I want the fortune. No, I deserve the fame and the fortune because I know when God gives me, I, first and foremost, I, I'm very appreciative of the platform I have now. Mm -hmm. And I can even excel here. I just I just trust that God is going to up me, you know, my tax bracket, mm -hmm. my my platform, because I'm, I want to be able to reach the broken underdogs that, you know, like we discussed yesterday, that people look over. I want to be able to motivate them. I want to be able to make them laugh. I want to be able to make them cry and, and have faith and just transform their mind because I feel like my life is, um, ever since I can remember, it was always faith-based. So, like, I don't expect people to have my type of faith because it's crazy. Like, I can hear something in my spirit and be to you it'll look like I'm on the verge of losing everything but for me I know that I'm going up because I know this feeling I know what it do I've been here time and time again you know what I mean so I want everybody in life who's around me or who can hear my voice at the sound of my voice <laughs> I, know that's right. I want them to be able to have that right now faith too because people give up way too easy you know and and, and I will never forget a, a lady it's an evangelist I used to work with I, years ago I was a manager at Avenue clothing store for plus size women mm -hmm. long time ago child. I don't even think they exist no more um, I right I remember I was worried about something and it was a lady she was an evangelist she just worked there part time you know just doing a little thing whatever and I remember her saying to me I was I think I was worried I don't remember what I was worried about but she was like when is it when is it supposed to happen or when is it due and I was like I remember saying to her um, next week she was like girl God can change something overnight you worried about next week and she just laughed and walked off, and that stuck with me like, dang, God can't do something overnight. And then, I, and I even grew my faith to make it like, I can do something in the next hour. I've it's seen exactly. it happen like that. I've literally seen it happen like that. But I'll share more can I tell you uh, during that you my segment. Are really encouraging me, and Amen. Like why, why you when you started talking, I started typing into my sister. Um, it's no, my daddy is sick. Mm. My boy got stage four cancer, and. I kind of accepted the fact that like he ain't gonna be here too much longer. I know because I'm a dreamer. Like it's like I'm certain things come to me in dreams before it happens or whatever. But like you got the power to change everything. Like he's still here. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Uh, King Hezekiah, um, the pro God sent the prophet Isaiah to tell Hezekiah that he was gonna die, and uh, Hezekiah didn't accept the word. He turned his face to the wall and prayed, and God gave him 15 more years and delivered him out of some stuff. So my dad is still here. I turn my face to the wall. Like you literally just encouraged me. I feel like D hell on him. I can say that, but you just <laughs> really <laughs> encouraged me in that moment to be like, things can change overnight. What? The the the, yes. the, the stroke didn't take him out in 2017. Cancer didn't take him out in 2018. Came back in 2019, 2020, but he's still here. What what killed people? Like a whole lot of people, my boy fought all the way through it, so he did that. He can still come through. Like, thank you for real, for real. Like, thank you. No problem, and that's what I want. I, I get a lot of those, and it, it does something for me. Like, I know I'm so sometimes I can seem so full of myself, but really I come from a place previously with so much low self esteem, mm -hmm. and I and, and I remember like teachers and instructors and professors along my journey saying. You don't even know what you got in you, girl. You don't even know what's in you. But now I do. So now I embrace that and I own it. And I'm, I love getting the thank yous. I love getting the, oh, you helped me do this or helped me do that. Like even through the pandemic, I remember you saying, like, you, it was people who lost their job. You didn't know how to help them. And, and to be honest, I felt like, I felt opposite. I felt like it's something I can do to help. Even the girl who braids my hair, well, used to braid my hair. I want to come back. 
Um, <laughs> she was sitting, you know, complaining as she was braiding my hair about she don't have no money, you know, things are, uh, times are hard, whoop de whoop. And I was like, well, what, you know, why don't you try the little PUA thing? And she was like, I ain't finna do that, girl. So I was like, all right, come on. We got, what, six more hours on me? I said, come on, let's do it. Did it. Two days later, she had over $10,000 in her account. Mm. Promise you, oh. true story. Another, right. another situation, someone else I know, um, was, you know, basically telling me their situation, crying, had a whole sob story. I, I wanted to help this individual, but I felt like it would cross some boundaries in my personal life, and it was like, eh, you can't, you, you can't help this individual. Like they gonna have to, whatever. <coughs> the next morning, as I was using the bathroom, I heard help, help this individual. And I'm like, I ain't gonna help this person. Uh-uh. Mess up what I got going on, you know. Um, but I was obedient to the spirit, um, and I, I called this individual. I was like, hey, did you hear about X, Y, and Z? Um, as far as, you know, the unemployment. And they were like, yeah, but I don't think I was like, nah, I helped somebody else. It's going to work. It's just It's going to work. Just had a face going to work. Got there um, on the phone, did the little social and all of that. And then when I went into their account, their job had already set it up. And it was also over $10,000 in it. So, faith. But the thing is, is that if you had faith, you believed that, that you could be a best in your life. You listened to your intuition. You listened to what was on the inside of you in order to make that happen. Yo, I hate to break this because I like, well, we got to take a break. And when we be, we come back, we're going to come back with too much tea and then we'll get back with, with our t- topic. So just stay tuned. Here's 92.3, the real definition in that radio, Lick Morning Show. <laughs> 